She's a master chef, Lana. It's blood, sweat, and literal tears in the kitchen. Ready to find out which ones made it to season five's top 10 master chef worst dishes? I'm ready. Blueberry pie with pecan? I don't know how I feel about that. Episode three of season five begins in the Mojave Desert. The task was to prep a meal in two hours for 500 army soldiers. The blue team served grilled chicken with barbecue sauce and potato salad. The red team, on the other hand, served double cut pork chop with apple chutney and coleslaw. The service always managed to put all these home chefs on the edge. In the end, the red team won with 329 votes compared to the blue team's 171. What was next? That's right, the pressure test. Uh, so much pressure. With Daniel saving three members, the rest were given 75 minutes to bake a perfect blueberry pie with a lattice crust. Making one of the MasterChef staples is more than enough to make any budding chef shake in their aprons. Whose blueberry pie earned the judge's ire? Chef Gordon thought that Stephanie's crust was undercooked, too doughy at the bottom, and had too many elements in it. It was also too sweet. Joe Bastianic had little to say. In the end, Stephanie's blueberry pie with pecan had a combination that simply didn't work. Pecans in a blueberry pie? Definitely not Chef Gordon's blueberry pie. No chance. <laughs> no one near. Disappointing donuts. It actually was a huge disappointment. Episode 4 of Season 5 had more than the usual MasterChef drama, because one of the home chefs fell ill and could no longer be part of the competition. With 18 contestants left in the running, the pressure just went up a notch earlier than expected. To jolt the home chefs into action, the judges had set up a mystery box that contained something that warranted caution. It was a net full of fresh, live seafood. The task was to create an amazing seafood dish in 60 minutes. The winning dish was a Ron Cho's spicy seafood stew with jasmine rice. The next challenge was an elimination test among muffins, cookies, and donuts. Everyone had to make donuts served in a box. Donuts are certainly delicious, but not easy. With 90 minutes on the clock, the home chefs worked at a frantic pace. They all felt the pressure under the judge's watchful eyes. Everyone managed to wing it except for Kira. Unfortunately, her donuts weren't filled and were more like Kaiser rolls than donuts. It was visually appealing, but her donuts were a huge disappointment. You've all disappointed me greatly. The unmedium rare steak. Looks like a pair of Dr. Martins. This episode saw the home chefs cook for a master chef wedding, and boy did tempers flare. The winning team was the blue team. With the blue team immune, the red team now had to walk through their elimination challenge. But the twist was only three would be cooking for the pressure challenge. Singled out were Leslie, Jordan, and Francis. For this pressure test, the three of them had to cook a dish that defines America. The quintessential American protein. Steak and steak frit. I know this steak doesn't exist. What makes the perfect steak? To pass the judge's standards, a knife has to slide through the steak like butter. It should be perfectly seasoned, seared, and medium rare. And it wasn't enough for the dish to have the steak down to a T. The steak frit had to be perfect as well. Whose steak was less than perfect? Jordan's. While it definitely had flavor, this steak was medium, not medium rare. His steak frit, on the other hand, had no color whatsoever, even though it was seasoned well. Gordon had really nice words to say, even though Jordan had to give up his apron this early in the game. You get yourself in the business as soon as possible and keep your head up high. Panna cotta by another chef. Food guy's got panna cotta in his office. Ooh. This episode had two returning champions, Luca of MasterChef Season 4 and Alexander of MasterChef Junior Season 1. But before they stepped in, the remaining home cooks had to unlock the mystery box. The mystery box contained 52 unlabeled aluminum cans containing various processed vegetables, fruit, meat, and seafood. This challenge tested everyone's ability to elevate lowly canned ingredients to restaurant standard dishes. Elizabeth's dish won the challenge. Oh, way to go, Liz! As the winner of the mystery box challenge, she would be in control of the elimination test. Two MasterChef winners presented Elizabeth with choices. She had to choose who would cook which dish. The challenging dishes, pancetta wrapped veal, and passion fruit panna cotta. Who went home for the worst dish? Tyler. His passion fruit panna cotta looked like, well, a disaster on a plate. And to make things worse, Chef Ramsay suspected that Tyler inadvertently plated a dish that he didn't make. He took out someone else's panna cotta out of the fridge by mistake. This was certainly a capital fence in Master Chef. The journey had to end for him right there. My journey is over, Morty. Greasy spring rolls. <laughs> so greasy. The pressure to cook has divided the MasterChef kitchen in so many ways. The team challenge was a challenge most home chefs feared. Each pair had to cook a surf and turf dish in just an hour. 
Aran and Leslie made pork belly tostada with crab guacamole and kimchi fried rice. The judges loved their dish. Uh, delicious. I mean, brilliant. Seriously. Dan and Cutter's plate didn't look very appetizing. Chef Gordon was appalled. Apparently, the two didn't get along from the get-go. They had made seared venison loin with seared ahi tuna. It didn't look good, but it sure sounded delicious, even if Chef Gordon thought it was the worst dish in the competition so far. However, it wasn't Cutter and Dan's dish that got the boot. The pressure test had them cooking against each other. The dish? Spring rolls served with a delicious dipping sauce. It had to be light, crispy, crunchy, and bursting with flavor. There are so many ways to mess this up. Get the wrapper wrong, you go home. Get the filling wrong, and you can say goodbye to your apron. In the end, Francis's and his spring rolls got the boot. His spring rolls with glass noodles and vegetables didn't make the cut with ratio out of proportion. His dish was really greasy, and ultimately out of balance. Not good. Beetroot stuffed pasta. Hi, was it beets? Yeah. <laughs> That's with just 11 home cooks left, a coveted spot in the top 10 was this episode's top prize. To begin, the contestants had not one, but two mystery boxes. One box contained everyday ingredients. The other contained a fancier, high-end version of the first box. The good news was they got to decide which box to cook with. The judgment would be solely on the execution of the dish. The best dish went to Leslie's with a trio of protein, pork, beef, and ahi tuna with truffle puree, stilton, and pea puree. With him as the mystery box winner, he got to pick among three different types of stuffed pasta. Remember, ravioli, ravioli, give me the Joe's tortellini, Graham's caramelli, and Gordon's raviolacci. Leslie chose caramelli stuffed with mozzarella. Leslie had another advantage, though. He got to choose who among his competitors could use a hand crank or a rolling pin. Fortunately, the rolling pin didn't send Daniel's head rolling out of the kitchen. Francis's dish was a short rib caramelli with cauliflower and pepper puree. But the idea of beet juice was solely for color. Francis intended for it to look like summer, but Chef Graham thought it didn't go together. It had no seasoning, and it wasn't that good. Someone had to go home for going too far out of the box. And it was Francis. Toodles. Yolkless poached egg. I don't see any yolks. Master Chef contestants are all fighters. Many of those who earned the coveted white aprons gave up their jobs for the rare chance to earn the title of Master Chef. With the dream within reach, the remaining contestants were, more than ever, feeling the heat in the kitchen. <laughs> The first challenge for this episode was a chicken dish. Each team only got to cook one part of a chicken. With only five minutes allowed in the pantry, they had to shop blindly as the teams did not know which part they were getting. The immune teams for the first challenge were Elizabeth and Leslie, and Christian and Courtney, but one of them had to go home. Who would that be? We're about to find out after not just one, but two pressure tests. For pressure test number one, the remaining home cooks got to perfect a poached egg. With just one egg per contestant, they only had one chance to nail this delicate dish. Cutter's poached egg was disastrous, but Daniel's was way worse. Daniel lost the yolk during the cooking process. Where's the beef? Unseasoned burnt dim sum. Homemade dim sum with eight kinds of dipping sauce. The battle is on. The remaining seven, or shall we say top seven, found their mystery boxes filled with... Nothing says home in America than apples, indeed. Everyone looked forward to making a dessert dish, but the challenge was they could not make dessert. Courtney's dish was the winner. Her apple-stuffed pork loin won Joe over because she was able to use the apple in every component of the dish. Very impressive. With her as the winner, the rest had to slug it out with the elimination challenge. The tall order was to make dim sum, but each team had to make five. To make this challenge more exciting, Chef Gordon announced that this would be a tag team challenge. How did Willie and Christian do? Hmm, not too well. Their pot stickers were burnt, the other had too thick a dough. Chef Gordon thought it was disgusting because their dim sum simply lacked seasoning. Unfortunately, Willie had to give up his apron. Bye, Willie. Sticky Cream Puffs Why is it so sticky? With just six contestants in the running, everyone was just fighting tooth and nail for the coveted top spot. The first challenge for the top six was to prepare dinner at a restaurant under Chef Gordon and Chef Graham's supervision. The blue team headed by Jamie versus the red team headed by Leslie. Could Leslie head his team smoothly this time? Apparently he could. The red team won this challenge and was safe from the elimination test. Now for the pressure test. The pressure test was to create a crocombouche. A what? <laughs> 
This dessert consists of cream puffs piled into a towering cone. It is a classic French dessert finished with threads of caramel. And just like Chef Ramsay put it, several things could go wrong with this dish. To get this perfect is never easy. The home cook that would have done excellently well in this challenge would have been Jamie, the bakery assistant. But she was made to give her apron up. While Jamie's looked really awesome, she lacked the spun sugar. She also had loads of sticky caramel which made it difficult to serve. It looked good, but did not taste as good as it appeared. Doesn't taste good, honey. Undercooked risotto. I hate waiting. That's why I hate risotto. The final four home cooks were divided into two pairs. On the red team were Courtney and Elizabeth, leaving Cutter and Leslie on the blue team. It was girls against boys. Each team had to make an appetizer and an entree based on two boxes which both teams received. The girls won with their pan-seared rainbow trout with poached pear and cheddar cheese appetizer, plus a venison medallion's entree. They were immune even if Chef Gordon felt that their performance was underwhelming. Chef Graham reminded them that cheese and fish don't go together. With Cutter and Leslie about to butt heads, the pressure just hit the roof. Leslie and Cutter were assigned a California box of ingredients. They would replicate three dishes in 90 minutes. Unfortunately, Cutter had to go. Leslie had replicated the risotto dish better. Cutter's risotto was seasoned well but undercooked. The technique for making it involved stirring small amounts of hot stock to the rice a little at a time, a process Cutter didn't do enough of. As for the chicken teriyaki, Chef Graham thought that both overcooked the chicken, but the better one belonged to Cutter. As for the salad, it was 50-50. Leslie forgot the eggs while Cutter undercooked cook the tuna, but the winning salad belonged to Leslie. Well done, Leslie, well done! <laughs> we hope you liked the video. Are there any of the worst dishes of MasterChef Season 5 that we missed? If you want to see more videos like this, click or tap that subscribe button, and in order to become a trusted Babble Topper, be sure to ding the bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Thanks for watching!